Ah, the deaf language uh, today. Okay, copy her. I hope you're all together. Do whatever she's asking you to do, please. Happy Sabbath. Hey, are we together? Is it so cold? Uh, you're cold, you're cold. Is it raining today? Okay, so I want to see your smiles. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Okay, so we must smile today. God loves big. God loves us big. We can see today many, many people wanted to see today, but they've not seen it. Smile and be happy. Don't be gloomy. Mm -mm. So praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, my name is Rose. I want you to sign with me. Why today is Possibilities Ministry? It's a Possibilities Ministry Sabbath. Today, we are all Possibilities people. So, you must know my name. I'm not, I want to force you to know my name. There is no excuse. Mm -mm, no excuse. No excuse. You must know my name today, not tomorrow. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Do that. R. O. Can you see it? S. E, that is E, again, R, O, S, E, and then put it next to your nose, that's a sign name. Who can do that? I will meet you. And uh, I will meet you in town. Outside there, I know I'll meet you. And uh, I want you to be surprised. I'll mark your face. I want to mark your face. I'll memorize them. My memory of your face, I must mark it. And if you touch me or you part me, I will part you. I will ask you to greet me by my name. Okay? Say yes. I know it, we can. So that's my sign name, Rose. Praise the Lord. Please be happy today. This is this day the Lord has made it. We must be happy in it. Is it right? Okay. So, the whole day I expect us to be smiling and be happy. No gloomy faces. I don't want to see gloomy faces and no sleeping. Okay. I'm from Migori County. Ranen Conference. Omoare district. Sigiria East. SDA Church. I have come with greetings from Migori Central Church. Again, Sigiria East. I've also carried their greetings. 
these greetings plus my in my bag they're so heavy they can feel a bag huh? they are so heavy they can feel i think two sacks from migori central from sigiria east i've carried all these greetings to bring here i don't know if you accept them okay thank you when i was when i go back home maybe what do i tell them what do i tell them okay thank you thank you thank you thank you now i know you all know my full name plus my sign name so when you meet me in when we meet or any other place please just call me by my name okay rose please you remember me with the bible with the word of jesus in heaven it is going to stay as rose each each person each of us here god knows us by our names you are known by your name you are known by your name all of us all your name is written at the palm and the big, big big book of god so we don't play with the idea of a name and i want to welcome to our topic for today our topic for today is about a man named jacob you see this man uh he's, he surprised people or even children know the story about this man named jacob why because this man became it became a history he created a big history of a greater life so when we start from this man many many people who read the bible know about this man jacob a liar a very good liar and his story is so nice this man this man loved lying a lot this man cared for himself today and our family we know we are know our family is very well what people say god for us all but man for himself is that true is that true yes this man jacob is true his story is right this man for himself and god for us all this man jacob was not afraid he lied to his own father he never feared lying to his own brother he stole his birthright his and uh, he felt it is just okay lying to his father and then he felt okay so how many of us here are not liars who is who has never lied who has never lied tell tell me who has never told a lie here mm -hmm, you see in one way or another we have lied even in our offices we lie where we work we lie in churches we lie we lie everywhere but it is only time that we will come god in our lives that is when we get changed we change our attitude change in uh, spirit change in our physical appearance and uh, we're going to read the bible we start him eh? 
Genesis, the book of Genesis, chapter 22, chapter 32, verse 22. Someone to help us read to 32. It's a long read. Someone who can read for us. The Bible says, Genesis 32 from verse 22. During the night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two slave women, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, along with all his possessions. 24. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not defeat him, he struck Jacob's hip socket as they wrestled and, his dis and dislocated his hip. Then he said to Jacob, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? the man asked. Jacob replied. Jacob, he replied. Your name will no longer be Jacob, he said. It will be Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. 29. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he answered, Why do you ask my name? And he blessed him there. 30. Jacob then named the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, he said. Yet my life has been spared. 31. The sun shone on him as he passed by Peniel, limping because of his hip. 32. That is why still today, the Israelites don't eat the thigh muscle that is at the hip socket because he struck Jacob's hip socket at the thigh muscle. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want us to see this story. In our lives, it's, uh, it's applicable that you must change. Why? God controls our destiny. We don't have control over our lives. Many, many of us think that we know. We know, me, I know best. Tomorrow, I'm planning. I know best what I'm planning tomorrow, but God, who owes and knows a plan. You see, this man, Jacob, has enough. He has a family. He has two wives. And also, other two slave women, the children that he has are 11. He has a lot of wealth. The servants are also included. He wants to go back home. But first, his family must cross the river, Jabok. And then, Jacob remains alone and stays back. Why? Why not cross with the family and then continue or sleep with them? He decides to stay alone. Why? Maybe he had not control. Jacob had not control on that. And that means God had a plan for him to stay behind so that he has a close communication with God. And that is why I know many, many churches, and same like our church here, we fast. We fast. 
Why do we fast? Why do you have to fast? When uh, we sit now and want to think why you have to fast, many times we have fasting Sabbaths and the whole week of prayer. Most of us only follow the church rules. Ah, oh, 10 days of prayer. Or Sabbath fast. The church uh, has uh, closed, so there's no food. We come with long mouths. When you tell them they are not happy because we are going to miss food today. Huh? Everything, even their children. Mama, and when they ask for food, they slap them and tell them, well, they, what is the Bible saying? Hey, Colin, we are copying Jacob, we are copying Jacob. Is that true? Go home. No, it has lost its meaning. The meaning, uh, uh, fasting has lost his meaning. You see, when Jacob stayed behind, he was so close to a man, and then they had a fight. They were not scratching, but it was a real struggle. It means that he kept him busy. He kept him busy. When we fast, Please keep yourself busy. Don't just fast and maybe, uh, like I'm working, when I decide to fast today, I must go to work. And then there are so many, maybe you quarrel with your, your staff or you quarrel with your boss. Uh, no, keep yourself busy with God. You try and read your Bible. Because when Jacob was wrestling, he was not using his physical energy. The physical energy, it was spiritual. The fight that he had. And then he saw that he's going to fail. And he broke his hip. Jacob felt pain, but he continued struggling. We praise the Lord. Please, there's a point here. Many of us, when we are praying, and also when we are fasting, and then something must happen. Something must happen. Maybe you've lost something. Maybe. Example, you've lost your job. You lost your family member. Or you've become sick. And then you've lost focus. Most of us lose focus when something happens. But we must remember and learn from Jacob that when ja Jacob continued uh, ch struggling, he did not uh, bring his uh, distraction. It didn't bring him distraction. Praise the Lord. Please, look at me. We're learning something. In the world today, When you are a true Christian, you must focus. You don't focus on the problem. But we must not allow our problems to distract us from our focus on God. We must continue fighting for what we want. The same way Jacob, when, uh, he, was, when he became lame, he not say, now leave me, I want to go. But he said, never, you must bless me first. Hallelujah, church. How many of us have asked God for blessings? How many? I can see some hands. Yes. 
I have received, have you received what you wanted from God? Have you? You've received. Some have received, some have not yet received. It, it depends on your persistence. You must continue to ask and ask and ask until you get what you want. The same with Jacob. Jacob felt pain, but he continued to ask that you must bless me. He held her heart. The angel changed his name. Praise the Lord. How many of us here have a change in name? What has, has your name been changed? You became, when you're born, you had a name, and uh, when you, you changed, did you have a new name? Do you have a change in name? Now, what was your former name? Okay, he's saying that before he was uh, normal, but now son of, son of God. Now he's son of God. It means that all, are Christ, all Christians are children of God. Is that true? Good. We want to move to another Bible verse. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 to 10. Second Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9 to 10. The Bible says but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may reside in me. So, Verse 10, so I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and in difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Praise the Lord. You see, Jesus promised his grace and he says it's sufficient. We here have one challenge or another. When we focus on a blind person, we feel sorry for that blind person. But do you focus on your own problems? You work do you think you have enough faith? Or you are spiritually dead? Are you spiritually disabled? Are you spiritually sick? That is always good. Make sure that you are healthy first before you give support to another person. Do you have enough? Do you have enough grace to share with a blind person? Do you have enough grace to share with a deaf person? Do you have enough grace to share with a poor neighbor. Huh? Praise the Lord. We are all disabled. In our church today. And outside there. We are all disabled. In one way or the other. We have become poor 
we have very poor attitude to our neighbors. How? How do you treat your neighbor? How you treat your neighbor is very important. I love this church. Why? It inclu it's inclusive. I've met a blind person. I've met the deaf peer. I have people with the, I've seen people with the physical disability. All types of disability are present. But do we have uh, at, at attitude treatment to on people with disability? Attitude is what we must ask God to change. Let us fight like Jacob did so that God will bless us with a change in heart and a change in attitude. I want to come again here and meet blind persons from that far corner, the deaf also on that other corner, the physically challenged, all mixed, and the church is full, not just a group, not just a small group. I want them to feel part of the church. How? We sit together with them. We help. We care. Not only time for APM, Possibilities mean it's a Sabbath. No. But every other Sabbath, I know the church stays for a whole week. Full. Full week. People must come to church. I don't know if you, make, you can make sure that Possibilities Ministry members must also come in, uh, in the midweek to pray. We all have neighbors who is, who is a, a widow, widowers, a sick in church. We have sick people. And also, the sick people are disabled. Don't think that those who can't see or the deaf only are the ones who are disabled. Many are suffering. Some have cancer. Others have heart problems. Others do have problems. Others are suffering from arthritis. Different diseases. All are disabled. Let us go out to each, each member. Why? First Corinthians Chapter 12, verse 22 to 26. The Bible says, On the contrary, those parts of the body that are weaker are indispensable. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we clothe these with greater honor. And our unrespectable parts are treated with greater respect, which our respectable parts do not need. Instead, God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the less honorable. 
so that there would be no division in the body, but that the members would have the same concern for each other. So if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, even the Bible talks about the body, but we know it's not, not talking about their physical body here, but it's talking about the church. In the church, we have different, different departments. Children ministry, youth, women, widows, possibilities ministry, Adventist men ministries, all departments within the church. It is our responsibility to make sure that all departments work well. I think um, and when we add another department where we have the caregivers, I don't know where the sick are placed in the church. I don't know. But it's there. When the church member is sick, all members the same are sick. Because all are one in Christ. We know our neighbor, and we know a member who has cancer. We know a member who has a heart problem. We know a member who has sickle cell, different diseases. But I don't know if we have a, the department that visits the sick, that cares for the welfare of the sick members. When you think about possibilities ministry, think about the sick. Think about the poor. Think all people in the church who are not able. We know, and uh, we stay here in Nairobi, but uh, Nairobi is so big. And uh, a member from different, uh, we have members from different classes. Some first class, some second, third. Some have only one meal a day. Some don't have any meal. But we all try to come to church on Sabbath. We cover our nakedness. Nobody can know that I'm sick. Because I'm standing here, maybe I kept quiet. And then let us care for one another and each part of the body. Praise the Lord. We must care. I know this church is caring a lot. I know. But I want to ask, can we add more? Add more. I know the church has groups where people stay. They have grouped, maybe you have group, different groups. 
And then, we know a member of your group has a problem what you can see how you can bring that person to church and into in the church welfare to care so that no member feels left out. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about life. Life in the world today is not easy. Not like it was before. God uses disabled people to minister. Even the Bible, they're there. In the world today, they are there. God uses them to teach us. It is not good that we relax in church and then you're surprised that your neighbor is dead and then you start asking, who is that neighbor? Or maybe the flood swept away. Uh -huh. It's not fair. Care for one another. We have three men in the Bible who God used. Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 10 to 12. Exodus chapter 3 verse 10 to 12. The Bible says, Therefore, the Bible says, Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, Therefore, go, I am sending you to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people the Israelites out of Egypt. But Moses asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He answered, I will certainly be with you and this will be the sign to you that I am the one who sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you will all worship God at this mountain. Amen. You see, even long, long time, God used disabled people in his ministry. Moses was a stammerer. He was not a fluent speecher, uh, speech speaker. He got information from, from God, but God used him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Even today, God uses the weak member of the society to change lives of other people. In the church today, we know the disabled people uh, who have no jobs, maybe they're, they're just tailors, carpenters, they, are, they have nurses or maybe taxis they have. There are different jobs that they do. These are useful in God's ministry. You can employ you can employ a disabled person who knows how to make uh, chairs for the church. When people sit, the blind person can do something. A person who is on wheelchair knows something. And uh, as a church, we must bring them 
and give them work in the church. Maybe you have a capacity. You have the company where you can employ a disabled person. Look for the qualifications, the certificates. And if this person qualifies, you pick and give that job. That way you are promoting God's work. Praise the Lord. If we are not employing them, these weak members of the church, what will happen outside? It's the church first to accept the disabled persons and then the member of the world who don't know God will follow. Another example is David. David was short man. Very short. I don't know if uh, we have ever stopped to think about this King David. David was a man of short stature. Maybe a dwarf, as we call them. But God made him a king and a great king of Israel. He, he led the Israelites in many battles and he won. And up to now, we know David was a man after God's own heart. True? The same Jesus in the story of David oh, Jesus comes from the lineage of David. Praise the Lord. It's not the first time and it's not the last time that God will use the disabled people to spread the gospel. Another person who is Paul. We know Paul. Paul complained about a thorn. A thorn in the flesh. I don't know what type of thorn. I don't know. Because initially, we know that Paul really persecuted and killed the early church. But later, God would use him to spread the gospel. I don't know how God uses disabled people today in the society. I've not seen a disabled person as a president I've not seen a disabled person, politician. But people with disabilities can enter the church. We have like uh, people with albinism, they're there. We have Isaac Maura, who's a disabled person and a leader in the government. Any other person? Uh -huh. The third, any other person? Third person? We have some cook. Yes. And... Uh, Uh -huh. Now, you see, we can just count. We are counting. We are counting. But able, other abled people, how many? Can you count them? It is impossible. There are so many. You see the difference? That is why we must make sure 
that we have inclusive society where the national government has 30% and the remaining are for the disabled people. Each, each town, each county government must give 5%. And that's way it's going to be impossible for us to start counting people with disabilities if we true, we keep to that percentage. The book of Mark, chapter 10, 46, to 52. Mark 10, 46, to 52. The Bible says, they came to Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a large crowd, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many warned him to keep quiet, but he was crying out all the more, Have mercy on me, son of David. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man and said to him, Have courage, get up, he is calling for you. He threw off his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. Then Jesus answered him, What do you want me to do for you? Rabboni, the blind man, said to him, I want to see. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has saved you. Immediately, he could see and began to follow Jesus on the road. Praise the Lord. Jesus himself included the people with disabilities in his ministry. Not only this, but Mars, many, many Jesus healed the blind, the lame, the deaf, blind, the dumb, different, different, and even women with the, the woman with the issue of blood, he got her health back. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage us today, please. Know you and me that we have our issues in our lives. You and me, we must continue being persistent and ask God to give us, to heal leaders. Like, but he has cried and people tried to stop him. But Jesus stopped and listened to him and called him and asked him, what do you want? I just want to see again. And Jesus said, okay, your faith has made you whole. The same, like you and me, we have, I have my own issue. You have your own issue. Please bring it back to God. Only God can help you. Not, uh, not a man outside there. People will always uh, try to warn you. People will always have an attitude towards you. People will always talk negative about you. Many, many people have died in silence. They are dead in silence because of fear of what other people will say. Fear of what the society will say. And that is why we see many, many members of the church die. 
when other people are not when other people are not even aware you surprised that he died you surprised that this person also is in hospital you surprised that this one this one this one this one problems problems are full everywhere even sometimes you cannot even carry their own children to school because these are they, they miss school fees so they fear coming to church to ask because of fear of what members will say uh huh praise the lord God is talking to us today. We are all disabled. God is not calling us back. Oh, God is calling us back to him. God is saying, you cannot depend on your own understanding. Back to him with the prayer and fasting for him to bless you. Praise the Lord. That is the only way that you can solve your issues. Not by asking your neighbor to help you. Not by begging from the public. But back on your knees and ask God to bless you. Insist. 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 Insist until God gives you your blessing. And that is, there's no other way around that. You are a problem that you know. You have an experience that you have now. You can bring it back to God. Both you and me. Praise the Lord. I want to stop there and I want to ask each of us let us go back to the Lord and search back your steps where you got lost go back to God he will bless you God will bless you for sure and true. What God says in the Bible here, it has never failed. God's word has never failed. Hold his word and ask him, test him if he will not answer you back. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Amazing Grace.
us to give your heart to God. We have been weak in our faith. We are not persisted in our asking God for blessings. We need to build more faith. Who feels like uh, needs God's blessings more? We can come forward and then we pray. You feel that you want God to add you more faith. That persistent faith and you insist in God to bless you. Please, you're welcome, we pray. If you feel that you need God's blessing, go to add more grace so that you can be persistent in your prayers and God to bless you more you're welcome for prayer don't be afraid God knows us he knows our hearts don't fear we are all his children Thank you. I want us to believe and pray. Each of us open our hearts and maybe have your innermost prayer and present your petitions to God. Open your heart and welcome Jesus in your heart. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you again for this day that you've given unto us. We to hear your word. Lord, 
we think you that most of us who come here, we are weak. We are not persistent in our search for you and for your blessings. In our search to be with you all the time, Lord, remember us. Remember our brothers and our sisters who are standing in front. They've surrendered to you to change their hearts. To give them the courage that you alone to continue blessing and to continue worshiping you alone. To continue in struggling and search for blessing that they want from you. Oh Lord Jesus Christ, bless them. Give them faith to stand strong in you and to continue spreading your love. Lord, I pray for all members who have come to worship you and how different questions, but they just cannot tell. Deep in their heart, they know better. I ask you, Lord, please touch each of us. Bless us, Lord. We surrender to you and you alone. Now, as we'll be going back to our very different homes, we'll all get you protect us along the way. And also, what happens outside there, Lord Jesus, protect each and all of your children. Bless them and give them what they ask from their hearts. I pray, Lord, that to bless us in this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.